Welcome back, y'all, to another high adventure video here at the South Carolina coast. As you can see, already spent a night down here. We've camped out and we are getting ready to pack camp up actually and put it all right on our new G3 center console 20 foot long boat. This is our first ever camping on the new boat and I'm pretty excited. I decided to get down here a day early, kind of get a lay of the land. I haven't been fishing at the coast for a few weeks so got down here a day early and uh, did a little fishing yesterday. I actually had a little bit of success. Saw some new spots that I want to try over the course of the next couple of days. So we have with us fishing rods, net. You can see the shrimp and poles right over there. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of everything. In fact, I actually have a couple of uh, crabbing pots as well in the bed of the truck. So I think it's time to go ahead and get everything loaded up and we're gonna start stowing everything away in the boat. And let's see how we're gonna do this. I actually have quite a bit of equipment for this trip just because of the shrimping. Uh, you know, if I'm on a shrimp, I gotta keep everything on ice and all that stuff. So I've gotta bring extra stuff for that. But fortunately, we have a big boat. So I think we'll have enough space I guess we're gonna find out. Let's let's start packing up. Well guys, I think we have packed everything up that we need. Check it out. Got all our cooking stuff in there. In fact, we've actually still got space. Got some lights and stuff for tonight. Still got some space in there. All of our actual boat stuff. I ended up using the other um, live well for more storage. Got some snacks, got our pillow, tent, and a little power source way down in there. but. It seems like we have packed this thing away pretty well, even with two coolers on the boat. I mean, let's drop this down. Let's close all this up. I mean, we're still gonna have all this deck space, places to sit, and it's just me. So, I mean, I think it's gonna work out perfectly. We're gonna find out here in just a bit. All right, before we head out, we are going to catch us some fiddler crabs. Oh my gosh. All that right there. I don't know. Can you guys see that far? See all that right there? Those are all fiddler crabs. Now, what you do with these, as I've discovered, you kind of have to run up on them. So, here we go. Kind of, look, look at all. Look at all them scattered. Look at these. I'm just trying to catch some of the bigger ones. A lot of little ones. Look for those big claws. Look at all these guys. Oh, yeah. Come here. Look. I mean, look at the sheer amount of them. A lot of babies. There's another good one right there. A lot of little, come here, here. Oh yeah, we're gonna want a bunch of them. Just a pile of them. This is sheep's head candy right here. Actually, the nice thing about this is anything eats a fiddler. Oh, look at that crab. Look at this crab right here. It's like a big like rock crab or something. Ah, big rock crab. I'll take him. Ah, ah, throw him in there too. Where'd all these guys go? Bunch over here, oh, I see ya. As the tide falls, they come out and feed in the mud. Uh, it's a little, little high still. Ooh, let's come up. Look at us. Look at all of them. Come here, you beauties. Man, just a bunch of them. The good stuff. Oh yeah, see, I see a bunch over here. Look at them. Oh yeah, look at all these guys. Look at this. Oh, there's one with a big claw. Holy jeepers. See them all moving through here? Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Come on out. I see you. Yeah, buddy. Since we're gonna be out on the boat, it might be kind of difficult to get any more of these, so I'm trying to load up now. Uh, there we go. All right, there you go. We have got fiddler crab for days. And I got a couple big ones. We'll probably pitch those under a dock if we can find a cool spot for them. But I'll bet we probably got about four or five dozen in there. Enough to uh, try to catch some sheep's head or whatever. If we can't catch a sheep's head or any fish with that, then the fishing just ain't good or we are bad. Sweet, that's all I wanted right there. Let's go ahead, put our uh, bait in the boat. Now let's get out on the water, it's about time. Low tide's about an hour and a half from now, maybe two hours, uh, it should be perfect for fishing. Beautiful day, overcast, like 78 degrees, next to no wind, I'm excited, let's go. guys first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop our crab pots down so i told you guys i had some success yesterday i actually have a bag of redfish and sheep's head guts that we're gonna be throwing in with these crab pots i brought chicken 
And then all of a sudden I just smacked a bunch of fish. I was like, I think I'd rather use fish guts than chicken. So we're gonna do that at least to start. But if we want to freshen the crab pots up with chicken later, we can always do that. There we go. That looks pretty well packed up to me. I'm toss him right over the side here. Just like right here. I like throwing my pots where these oyster rakes are because the crabs, they uh, they like to hang around the oyster rakes just like all the like game fish do. I think it's just because there's all kinds of food. There's shrimp and stuff around there. So anytime I see crabs like on shore, it's almost always around a bunch of oyster rakes like this. So we look for that when we're planting our pots, or at least we try to. Another nice looking spot. Got a couple extra fish heads. So we just threw it on the top part of this double decker. Give the crabs a little extra something to get after. I'm just gonna toss this like right here. Perfect. All right. All right, that's done. Let's go to the fishing hole next. Where is it? In here somewhere. Ah, there it is. All right, y'all. This time of the year, there are terrible gnats down here at the coast. And I had a buddy, actually, Bobby over at Jig Head Outdoors, told me. This Avon Skin So Soft Gelled Body Oil. Oh boy. Um, this is apparently supposed to keep the little gnats off. I think they're no seams, is what they're called here in the South. They bite, they're super tiny, and the bite, while it hurts initially, the hurt goes away, but then the itch comes on, and the itch is like twice as bad as a mosquito bite. It is, it is gnarly. So this stuff has a smell to it that's supposed to keep these little beggars off of us. So we're gonna test it out. Hopefully it does its job. You don't have to worry about the gnats so much when there's a bit of a breeze, just kind of like any bug. When there's a breeze, you're fine, but it's gonna be calm the next couple of days. So we are really gonna hope that this stuff works or else we're gonna be hurting. Bring our bait up here. I'm starting today off with this Ugly Stick Carbon Inshore. I actually just purchased this from a local bait and tackle shop called Hatterall's. And this thing so far has been sweet. And then of course I have the Toadfish Reel. Which one is this? This is uh, the 2500. And what we have are a couple of split shots and this really small J hook. And we are going to, oh, we've got crabs trying to get out. No, everybody stay in there. Don't even think about it. Yeah, oh, we got an, an escapee. Get back here. This fiddler crab, this is a precious bait because as we're getting ready to find out if the fish are biting, the fish will steal these off. I'll, I'll go through maybe 10 or 12 fiddler crabs before I get a fish. So you've got to savor every single crab and they kind of can come off the hook relatively easy as well. But there you go. Look at that. You got the big white claw stands out down there. We are at our first spot, which I have fished this spot before, but we're gonna try this first and then see if anybody's hitting. And then we'll probably go try some new spots that I scouted yesterday. Water's starting to slow down a little bit. Been here for about 15 minutes. Something just bumped the fiddler crab. Oh, we've got no fiddler crab. <laughs> there we go, back in it. Good luck, little dude. Go catch me something, would you? He's like, you know, really? Oh, there's a little bite. See that? Well, you guys probably, oh yeah. Come on. Very light. Oh, oh, come on. Is he on there? Got him. Got him. Fish on. Sheep's head. Look at that. Bingo. Don't know if it's big enough to eat. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be 14 inches. We'll swing him aboard. Look at that. First fish. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! Beautiful fish to start the trip. I about guarantee you that's not 14 inches. We'll double check it up. I'm gonna guess that's probably about 12 and a half, 13. Right here. Yep, yeah, that is 10, 12, about 13, 13 inches. Beautiful fish, but that's a good sign. They're in the area, y'all. Good sign. Drop them back down. Beautiful. I'm not gonna waste any time. Gotta go find that keeper. Go find that keeper. You know, that's a that we caught him on the third fiddler crab. No second. Excuse me, second fiddler crab. That's not bad. 
that's not bad uh, crab to fish ratio. Oh, there's a bite. Look at that. Oh, he's swimming up a river. Got him. Another a little sheep's head. Dang it, they're getting smaller. What the heck? They're just such cool looking fish, y'all. Such cool looking fish. Ooh, spiky too. Stop it. Oh, see, you bum. Right in the tip of the thumb. What a bum. What a bum. It's an excellent hook set though. Look at that. Right in the top of the beak. There we go. Popped right out. That's like eight inches. Cool looking fish though. They're down there. You just gotta find that big one. Got him. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Holy cow. Oh, nice sheep's head. Nice sheep's head. That's what we want. I actually brought a net with me this time. Right at the top of the lip. Oh, come on. That might be a keeper right there. Yes. Let's go. Woo, baby. I think that's a keeper. It's going to be close. That's a good. Oh, look at that. The hook flew out. I didn't have another three seconds fighting that fish. Oh, yeah. Got to be 14. Let's go find out in the back. Come on, baby. Need some dinner. Is it 14 inches? Oh, dudes, it's tickling. Look at that. That's 14 right there. In fact, oh, 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 it just fell down in the battery section. That was stupid. Come here. Come back out here. There we go. As I was saying, if you pinch the tail, she lays right at 14. She! Oh yeah, oh yeah, just a hair past 14. That's a keeper fish. Let's go. Gorgeous look at sheep's head. Let's back ourselves away from the rocks. Oh, that's gonna taste good. We're gonna throw him right on this guy right here. I brought all this ice. Yes, all right. First fish in the boat. Took a while, we've been here for about an hour. I think we're gonna drop a couple more crab down. See if anything else is lurking down there. I think we're gonna move to a different spot. That's what they want right there. Hook right through the back. They're down there wiggling around. Those sheep's head just can't, just can't pass it up. Most fish can't pass that up actually. We just missed a bite, but he never tasted the hook. It bent down and just popped back up. So hopefully he's still down there. Oh yeah, he's still down there. So I'm getting bit again. Got him, got him. Ah, oh, jeepers. I'll bet this is another sheep's head. Ah, oh, shoot, not very big. Man, these things fight so good though. Fight so good. It's probably about a 12 inch or... Man, we're starting to hit it right at this, like right at the turn of the tide. Starting to pop a few fish. Where's my pliers? Where are my pliers? Good fight. Good fight. Run into the small ones. Feel fortunate we got that nice size one. Let's drop one more crab down. Just make sure he doesn't have, doesn't have a big daddy hanging out down there with him. Let's get a good, robust looking crab. This is a robust crab right here. Come here. Guys like nice and pink. Pinkish orange. Good color to him. Good body. Come on. Fresh crab. We got sheep's head or something down here. I mean, I know it's sheep's head, but we got, we got fish that have just almost, it feels like it's just kind of moved into the area because I'm like dropping down and getting bit almost immediately. Right there, I'm getting bit again. Right there, see him swimming? Oh, oh, we just dropped it. No, he still got it. Got him. This might be a redfish, just the way that was swimming. Nope, that's a sheep. Another sheep. I just think it's a little too small again. Good grief, it's like they've moved into the area. Good night. Yeah, that's a little small. Swing him. I wouldn't swing him if I thought he was a keeper. Look at that, though. Good grief. Can't resist it, y'all. They cannot resist that, that little fiddler crab. This stuff is just candy. Let's see if there are any more. Yeah, there are. Look at that. I've got one loaded on. There he is. Oh gosh, look at that. Ooh, dang it, so close, man. I've got like a school of, a tw like these are gonna be good fish next year. <laughs> we'll swing them aboard. Now that, golly, we'll measure it up for fun. Let's measure it up for fun. <laughs> I 
pretty fish really pretty fish now nah, that's yeah dude, that's about 11 and a half drop them back in i'm kind of done messing with all these small sheep's head it was fun to catch i'm glad we got one keeper but i'm gonna try some of these new spots out especially since we're starting to get towards the later afternoon we don't have all day especially when you're fishing the tides it's not like fishing a lake or river you know when you're fishing the lakes or rivers you know you have literally all day but a lot of times that good bite in the inshore fishing is around like that low tide period so you have like a four or five hour window it seems like where things can be really hot kind of like that sheep's head bite we just experienced so let's go ahead and get to another spot before we lose that low tide steady as she goes all right perfect y'all check this out i was here yesterday as i stated earlier and i actually ran into one of a subscriber a guy i met last year while i was down here was with some buddies and uh, he pointed me in the direction of this creek and he said you might want to go down that way and check out some areas down there i don't think you'll be disappointed and this was i think probably one of the spots he was talking about look at this this old dock right next to all this rock and rubble i mean this looks absolutely i mean absolutely fantastic is what it looks does this not look gorgeous or what let's turn this down a bit all right oh nice and shady right here and everything i mean what more could you want grab one of our little shrimp i'm gonna just keep the same setup since tide's not ripping yet hook that ship right through the back of the horn here we go right, right down in there definitely got a little pop right there oh yeah oh yeah come on got him got him yes sir i knew nothing could resist that big fat shrimp oh it's a slot or not a slot red but it's a little red fish dang not the size i want but our first red of the day actually that surprises me that it took us this long to catch a red nice little 12 13 incher there you go now stole my shrimp enjoy that bubs let's find another fat shrimp here brutal there's one got it got it there she blows i'm gonna guess another red another red right there push off the dock ah, i think he's still under the slot we gotta be 15 i guess probably like 13 pretty fish not what i'm after though yeah nice i told y'all they're down here told you they're down here you gotta find them That's a fish. Oh shoot, that was a fish. What am I doing? What are you doing? Oh, I thought it was snack. Like something just sat down there, ate it, just gobbled it, and it just sat there. Didn't even move. Who thought that? Wow. I hooked the piling. <laughs> all right i'm really shocked i'm not getting more out of this spot i see another nice dock down here though we're gonna drift down this way give that a try i would have i'd have bet money we'd have caught a couple nice good ones out of here definitely not gonna give up on this we'll come back and give it a try again sometime but really really surprised we didn't hammer more fish i mean it feels like there should be fish stacked up in a place like this look at this right here fairly similar to what we were fishing except maybe not quite as many rocks along the shore but Plenty of good looking pilings, older pilings. That's a bite right there. Well, you gonna eat it or what you doing? Gosh, these fish seem finicky today. Got him. Ain't very big. What do we get? Oh, a little black drum. <laughs> little black drum. Bam, bam, bam. Ah, black drum. Bam, bam, bam. That's a baby black drum. Get out of here. Pish posh. Absolutely zero problem catching fish today. I am having a problem catching quality fish today. There's a fish on there. Got him. 
again, it's just not very big. Why? It's another black drum. Okay, it's kind of like when I was fishing at the pier in my last video, there's got to be a bigger one somewhere around here, right? Righto? Ugh. guys we are starting to head into the evening time as you can tell so i decided we're gonna go ahead and check our crab pots and then we are gonna hightail it to our camping spot for the night go ahead and get all that set up but first let's go check these pots see if we got anything in it i'd like a little crab tonight personally i'll, I'll boil some right up here on the boat outside the tent here's our first pot come on be good to me i'll bet it is gonna be good actually leave this out so we'll leave it out overnight what do we got oh i see crab i see lots of crab look at that yes sir let's go oh that's a big one right there that's a big all right let's dump these out i just realized i don't have my tongs with me actually that's kind of stinky oh no i don't want all this mud on the boot ah someone put in the tent later oh man that fish I think fish is just, it's gotta be the best bait ever for crab. Look at all these crabs, y'all. Look at all of them. Well, let's see, which ones do I want? We're gonna throw a lot of these back, actually, because I just want some for today's trip. I've got, I've had plenty of crab recently. So we're just gonna scoop these up. No, no, no. You guys can get bigger, you as well. You get to go over, you as well. Dude, let go, your freedom's right there. There, let go, let go. What, what, don't attack me, bruh. If you don't let go, I'm putting you in the cooler. Yeah, that's what I thought. Look at these guys right here. Here's some big ones. No, no, don't grab my cord. Stop. Look at this guy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. That's a big ones here. Look at now. Look at now. Here. You can pinch my shoe. That is a big crab right there. That was a big old blue crab. That was the biggest one I caught. The thing I love so much about that though, the claws on that. Oh, <laughs> yes. Something else to put in the cooler. You know, I bought all this ice and I got one fish on it. It's kind of sad. Kind of a little bit sad. Another really nice crab. Drop him right down there. I don't know what's so fun about pulling up crab pots, but it's like it never gets old. I love it. There's something fun about it. Oh, that's under the boat. There we go. Come on up. Come on up. We got crab in here. Oh yeah, we got crab in here. Plenty of blue crabs still in the creeks, if you guys are wondering. End of October. Yeah, you know, the water's still like 72. I'm trying to get all the mud off of this thing. Water's still 72. I think I remember somebody saying the blue crab will usually stick around to the water's about 55 or so. Seems like I remember them saying. So, anyway, I mean, golly, we got a bunch in there. We're just gonna hand pick what we want again. Probably get two or three out of this box. Call it good. You know what you can go to we'll keep these guys what do you say what do you say look at that huh blue crab and end of october south carolina coast this is gonna be delicious later i gotta go get camp set up so we could eat i'm starving i'd like some blue crab i've got some other stuff i'd like to eat too let's go get camp set up that does it for us on the on the pots for today good six hour soak or so and we've loaded up the cooler seems like we have a boat in distress here let's stop and see what's going on you're dead you got rope okay cool Get a point in the right direction here. I'm gonna kind of shut it off and it'll should whip your nose around. Alright. There she goes. 
Cheetos. Now we're cooking. Heck yeah. Y'all good back there? Yep. Give a little juice here, if we can. Juice, hey! See, if I had the old SS High Adventure, I don't think we could do that. I mean, maybe, but they got a big old jet boat. Don't know if we could be towing them very well. This, though, this isn't doing too shabby. Fortunately, the uh, boat ramp here is only about a mile away, so we'll get them in, and we'll continue on in our journey. Oh man, that worked out perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome, man. Good luck. Awesome. They're back. Let's go. Anchors away. Like so. Throw another one off the bat. Two 10 pound anchors. Honestly, you probably only need one, but since I'm at the coast and you got tides and stuff, I don't want to wake up in the morning and be like five miles offshore. You know? So we're going to do a little overkill. All right. Look at this, y'all. Look at this. One second. I got to show you. I just love stuff like this. Look at our view. When you boat tent camp, the whole lake, river, or in this case, the ocean, it's your it's your RV park. I get to camp wherever I please. And you know what? You hear that? You hear that? I don't hear any kids screaming. I don't hear any dogs barking. I don't hear any old people fighting. I don't know if I've really heard many old people fighting, but I have heard a lot of drunk people at campgrounds. Oh, check it. It's gonna be like a full moon tonight. I see a big old moon coming up over there. Maybe not quite full yet, but I hear the birds. I hear the gentle rustle of the breeze through the grasses behind me. I hear the splash of fish. I hear boats tootling along, I guess. I hear an airplane somewhere. Oh, there it is. Anyway, you get the point. When you boat tent camp, like this is probably one of my favorite things about like doing this particular activity is just you get to go wherever you want to go. Anyway, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get camp set up. This I'm nervous about this part, so we got we got to see how all this is going to work. I think it's going to work, but I guess we're going to find out here. All right, for this occasion, I've even purchased a new tent. So I did do a dry run of this at the house. So we'll see. We got about 45 minutes before I'm going to have to break the lights out. Oh man, whole thing is under flowing to the water. Uh, it's taking shape. It's taking shape. Seem to have hemmed myself in a little bit here. Uh, oh, there we are. It works. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it's coming together. One thing I'm not a massive fan of. Check this out. I have this right here. See that right there? It's kind of a act like a sail it's pushing inward I gotta figure out if there's a way that I can like I don't know maybe there's a strap in the front where you would normally stake it we can like pull that back let me see all right we did it come check out the digs first ever on the new boat the thing I love the most number one we're on the bow of the boat, right? So we have all this room back here to do stuff. Do you guys remember on the SS High Adventure, like we were like scrunched up on the bow of the boat, like trying to cook and all you could do is like sit in one spot and I had to like maneuver around. Now I can walk around, come back up here, hang out. There's the tent at the bow. Like I've got all this space back here. There'll be even more space when we're doing like freshwater stuff. Man. But anyway, check out this tent. <sighs> First thoughts, everything works. Everything works. I can lay down. The bow is big enough, but I can lay out it's right there. I can I can fully lay down on the on the cot. That's nice. I, as far as I could stretch out. There's no I don't have to be all like cramped up. Um the other little bone I have to pick with this tent is actually the bottom fabric. I don't know if it's any different than from the side fabric. 
So, I almost feel like, well, I guess it's not, I, I thought it was the moisture was kind of wicking through, but yeah, maybe not. I don't feel anything. It was like a relatively cheap tent. I'll have a link to it in the description if anybody wants one. Um, but we have the rain flap on it. This whole thing is supposed to be uh, uh, not, whatever, what is that, waterproof? Uh, but I put the rain flap on because normally you just have these vents here, or the whole side is just like mesh so you can see out, but it is gonna be like 65 tonight, so I wanna try to keep some heat in. But here you go, guys. Look at us, y'all. We're doing it. We're boat tent camping on the new boat, which still needs a name, by the way. I've, I, I haven't made a decision yet, but wow. Everything worked pretty much how I had it in my mind. Um, I mean, we're anchored up, we're out here. First thing in the morning, we're gonna go shrimp it. And we have plenty of space. That's the other thing I like. Like, you know, I have my, my power station in here. We've got our backpack and stuff over there. But like here in about a month or two, when it starts getting like 50, 45 at night, 30 at night, I want my heater, right? I've got a little space heater. Well, space heater, we got tons of space over here for the space heater. So still plenty of room for more stuff because we're definitely gonna have to add more stuff. But, there you go. This is awesome. Definitely needs a few tweaks, but uh, we'll work all that out. That's why you gotta come out here and do it. But this is cool. This is really cool. I think it's time for some dinner. Let's get some supper. <sighs> Need some water for our crab. Bingo. Slice off a little butter into our skillet here. Melt that down. Get that butter moved around in there, melting down. Now for our first camping in the boat trip, I brought with me a steak. And we're going to do a little steak and some crab, a little surf and turf, if you will, as a celebration for the first camping in the new boat. It feels like it's needed. There we go. Little Team Weber. Chicago steak. Oh man, the steak is smelling divine. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. This water is taking forever to boil. Come on. Maybe because I'm watching it, but that steak got about probably five minutes on that side, four or five minutes, and that's going to be good. I like my medium rare. Okay, so we've got our water boiling now. However, I've been sitting here like a goober watching it, and I forgot to put my old bay in there. I don't know what got into me. Maybe too much heat. Ugh. Dump a bunch of old bay in. There we go. I'm going to let that roll around for just a second. There we go. Put a couple of slices of fresh butter on top of that steak. In fact, that's just about done. Everything's coming together quite nicely, and it smells phenomenal here on the boat. There we go. Heats off on the steak. I just realized I didn't bring a plate. So we're going to have to eat the steak right out of the skillet, which yeah, no matter. We're camping, but we have our water rolling now. That old bay has been hanging out in there. Old bar. What am I saying? We've got a few specimens hanging out here on the ground. In fact, actually, let's we'll start with this guy. They were totally not alive. They, they go dormant on the ice. Whoa, he can almost reach me. They could go just like, they, they go to sleep on the ice. Oh, look at that. Ooh, that was close. Um, He knows his fate though. But when you bring him out of the ice and you set him out here, then all of a sudden it's like they resuscitate. So anyway, he's going in the boiling water. Ooh. There we go. Drop right in fast. He's pulling the whole pongs in with him. There you go. There you go. He gone. There you go. Oh, good grief. Good grief. Um, hmm. Left the claws on. Hey, you need to go in there too, actually. There we go. I think I could fit one more in there. Let's do this smaller guy. Oh, uh, he's, he might have actually given up the ghost. He's still not very moving. That's perfect. He'll go right in. Sweet. About five minutes. 
those will be done. Here is the last piece of the puzzle. Melting some butter down. Oh, oh careful. That's gonna go along perfectly with our crab. We've set off to the side. We're letting that just uh, stew in the juices. It's actually been in there uh, for probably about 15 minutes. I turned the heat off and set off to the side and hopefully that like old bay will kind of get into the joints and get into the meat of the crab and uh, give it a little flavor, hopefully. There we go. We're gonna start off with some fresh steak. Let's say a quick prayer. Thank the Lord for our day. Keep us in safety overnight as we're camping out here on the coast. <sighs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you for this life that we live, Lord. Thank you that we have the good health to live it, to enjoy these things and enjoy your creation, Lord God. I just pray that you bless this food to my body now, and I pray you keep Stephanie and the kids in safety back at home and bring us back together in safety tomorrow. Through Jesus I pray. Amen. You know, a big part of this, what you guys don't see, is my wife at home taking care of three little kids. And she does that so I can go out and do this so we can make a go of it, really. <laughs> but she is the unsung hero of high adventure videos because if it wasn't for her dedication and her saying, yeah, go for it, I'll watch three kids because we homeschool and so she's with them literally 24-7. Um, there would not be any high adventure videos. So, a little overcooked. There's still some pink in that, but I like a little more pink. Oh, the butter on top, that's what makes it, man. Like, that's a good cut of steak, but there's something about that melted butter. Oh, man, that's delicious. There it is. <laughs> Fresh. Oh, it's steaming, piping hot. Oh, gosh. It's still plenty hot. So, this is like the claw size I usually get, right? Look at that claw. I mean, jumbo. Jumbo. That's phenomenal. Oh, I'm excited. Look at it. Look at it. Right into a nice little dish of butter. Hmm. Cheers. Throw the scraps right over the side because we owned a boat. This is living, ladies and gentlemen. All right, take a look at this. My dad, or me ancient as y'all know him, he taught us this trick growing up, especially with crab. What you do is you take all the meat out, you just dump it in the butter. So then instead of just getting a little bit of meat at a time, now you've got like this whole pile of meat. So we've got a nice pile of crab. We've got our steak over here. Oh, look at that. I still got some pink in it, but I don't know what I'm talking about. Scoop that up with some crab. Actually, I should start with the crab first. Then poke that steak. Oh, that's the ultimate surf and turf, right? Oh. Oh, I got some crab shell. When you're putting the crab meat in, make sure you clean the shell out. But, oh, I don't know if this night can get any better. We are living it up here. This is G3 living. Mmm, I get used to this bigger boat. Oh, it is 11 o'clock. I just had a shark fishing rod out for about the last hour, hour and 15 minutes. And not a single bite. That actually really surprises me. I don't know. Maybe it's getting a little too chilly for shark fishing. I don't know. It's been a weird bite today. Been a real weird bite today. But that's what it's like at the coast, man. It seems like it's like feast or famine. I'm ready for bed. I'll catch you guys first thing in the morning. We should have a phenomenal view of the sunrise. So I'm looking forward to that.
go. Good morning, y'all. Oh, I told you we'd have the best seat in the house. Sun is up. It's about 7.45 in the morning. And I've got to have the net gator on because the bugs are atrocious this morning. The little no see -ums. Man, look at this tent, though. Look at how dewy this is. Shoo! Yeah. Something else you kind of have to fight when you're out here doing this boat tent camp. Well, any tent camping, really. Jeepers. Somebody's hunting something this morning. As long as we don't hear any bullets whizzing overhead. Hmm. Good hearty oatmeal right there. Reminds me of eating like an oatmeal cookie. We're right at high tide right now and I'm waiting for that tide to turn and start going back out. You don't want to shrimp at the slack tide because when you throw your bait down, you want the current to be moving that bait around and that's what brings the shrimp in. So it kind of leaves a you know scent trail basically that the shrimp follow up to your bait. When it's slack tide, there's no tide to do that. so. We're waiting for the slack tide to pass. The tide is still coming in currently, um, but we should be right at right at peak tide. So sometime in the next probably half an hour, it'll turn. So I've got several spots we could trim. Just trying to decide where do I want to do. If I want to go to the Old Faithful or try somewhere new. Decisions, decisions. All right, we are out to our shrimping grounds. Uh, I've actually never shrimped on the high tide. I usually shrimp on the low tide when the tide's coming in, but it's high tide and the tide is now starting to go out. So where we would normally be putting poles where it's two feet, it's actually about close to seven feet. So we'll see. I'm gonna drop a couple poles down and I'm curious to see if there's any difference. There you go. Beautiful bait ball. Throw him right down there. We've got two on each pole. Give this about 10, 12 minutes. Then we'll throw a net and see if there's anything out here. All right, here we go. Let's see if anybody's home. Not a bad throw. Not the best, but not the worst. Anybody on that one? Oh, uh, now we do have a few shrimp though. Okay, yeah, we do got some shrimp. Look at this shrimp here. Not a whole lot. This is a big one. Look at this. Look at this right here. Dump them out. Oh, yeah, every one of those is a nice size. Look at that. Look at these. Oh, those are beautiful. Those are really beautiful shrimp. Oh, look at that size of that one right there. Good knit. Ouch, poke myself. Look at that. That's the biggest one you'll get right there. Man, ooh, you know what? That's like like only one of those. That's like a bait size right there. What do we get? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. 11 and 10 out of the 11 are good eaters. You know, that might be worth staying around for right there. Not the mass amount like I caught the other time, but if they're quality shrimp, let's try this pole right here. If they're quality, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather the quality than the quantity. Then that way I don't have to pick through so many either. If this guy got any, I've got to imagine this one's going to have some. If that did. Yeah, we got more. We got more, not a lot. But we got some decent sized ones in there. <sighs> Looks like about another 11 or so. 10, 11. Be my guess. Oh, I brought my bait ball up. Look at that. <laughs> Throw that back down there. Look at that. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, ten, and once again, only one. That guy right there. It's the only one that would probably just be used as bait. All these other ones are good size, y'all. Two throws, 23 shrimp. Only two are small. You know, I think we're gonna do this. Let's run the rest of our poles, get the bait out. But I think this is worth sticking around for this size of shrimp. The one thing I like here that we've got going on, there's a flat right out there. At the low tide, 
the water that I normally would shrimp is pushing in, running across that flat. However, behind us, there's about a 12 foot um, channel. So with the tide coming out, this bait and the scent is running into the channel. These big shrimp are gonna hang out in the deeper water, AKA the channel. So we might be drawing bigger shrimp up from the channel. So let's go ahead, waste no more time. Let's get the rest of these poles out here and let's get baited up. Yahoo! Seek! Kobe! Oh. Ooh. That's the beginning. Hopefully, over the course of the next hour, hour and a half, this basket gets filled to the brim. We have our line set. See running behind me all the way that way. There's actually, oh no, there's one other person out here shrimping. That is it. Which is crazy because it's a Saturday and it's gorgeous. I don't know, I'm not complaining. We've got the shrimping grounds basically to ourselves. We're gonna let the rest of this bait sit for about 15 minutes. Let's start running this line. I'm noticing something y'all. The water I feel like it's almost getting cloudier. You can see like the cloudiness, like the siltiness. You want that when you're shrimping because the shrimp don't like the light. If you try to shrimp in clear water, it's no good. I mean, maybe you can deep hole for them. I've never done that, but that's where you're, you know, like shrimping like 15, 20 feet, throwing cast net like that. Uh, obviously we're not doing that. And maybe, maybe that works in clear water. But when you're in shallow stuff like this, you want this cloudy siltiness because it gives the shrimp some cover and I've actually, the first time I went out shrimping, I tried shrimping in a super clear area, did not get a single three thing. I literally moved like a mile away and then put poles out and just started just wearing them out. It was crazy. And that's how I learned kind of the hard way that you've got to have that dirty water. Oh yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Look at that. Oh, man, there's some big ones. These are big shrimp, y'all. These are big shrimp. You know, that water's starting to cool down. We're at the end of October. Shrimp and season's only open for about another 12, 13 days here in South Carolina. But that water's cooling down. Oh, now there are a lot more on that one right there. Oh, look at the size, too. Look at the size of those shrimp. I mean, that these are way bigger. and uh, uh, Just more big shrimp than the last time I was out here. I might, get a, I might get a bag like this in my last video, if you guys watch, and there might be seven or eight out of this bunch that were like this guy right here. But look at the size compared to my hand. That's eaten size. That's eaten, eaten size. And that's just the first pole. That's just the first pole. We got nine poles to go. Let's get it back out there. Got this spot lock between the two poles. And what I'll do is I'll spot lock between these two poles, then I'll move down, spot lock between those, so I could just throw on each one. This is the ultimate way, pretty much the only way, I feel like you can shrimp by yourself. Oh yeah, I could feel the shrimp in there. When you're pulling it up, it almost feels like it's like sticky. That's the best way to describe it. I could feel the shrimp in this net, look at that. And when you pull it up and they're at the head of the net like that, yes, yes, more big shrimp more big shrimp let's empty them out <laughs> oh they're coming in now they're coming in now and the longer that bait soaks the more gonna come in Okay guys, I need help identifying this little fish. What is this? What is this? Caught him in the cast net just now. A little black dot on the underneath. <laughs> it's really cool looking. I don't know if I've caught something like this before. Do they get real big? Is it just a small like bait fish? Looks like he'd be good bait. But comment below, tell me what I just caught. We'll throw him back in. Oh, come on, you were out of the water for like, oh, there you go. Oh, he righted himself. Creek sized bait shrimp compared to the shrimp you want out in the big water. Oop. Oh, look at that. I mean that, there's a big tail difference right there. Big difference. That guy's gonna end up hopefully catching me some trout here, maybe in about a month or so. Water cools down. This guy, he might go in a soup. I don't know. I could sauteed up in some lemon and butter sauce. 
Mm -mm. Anyway, we're still loading it up. Oh, guys, how about that right there? Not a bad morning's worth of work. Good heavens, I don't even know how many quarts that is. We only filled the basket up probably about three quarters of the way. But I mean, all these shrimp, like 90%, maybe 95. I mean, they're all eaters. Absolutely amazing. I could tell it was starting to slow down because it was taking me maybe three to four poles to get as many as I was getting in like one throw this morning. We're hitting about 11, 11.30 in the, in the late morning. So it definitely seemed to be like a morning maybe even when the water was higher bite, if you will. I, though, am really happy with the haul that we've got this morning. Let's go ahead and head on a run, and then all the shrimp has made me hungry. We're going to cook up some fresh shrimp, I think, right here on the boat, and we have that sheep's head, too. All right, without further ado, it is time to fillet this sheep's head. Come here, you. Ah, the one and only fish I was able to put in the cooler. Well, I shouldn't speak too soon. We do have these lines out. And the, the skin I'm noticing on that sheep's head is like super thick. It makes it easy for cutting the meat away. Look how clean that is. Super easy for cutting the meat away. So, you know, sometimes like when you're trying to fillet, you know, you'll end up like cutting into the skin and you get like, like chunks of skin and it's just ridiculous. But that, that was super nice. Love that. I'm gonna cut those ribs out. Feed it to the crabs. Here you go, guys. I see some little fiddler crabs up there. You enjoy. Clean a few shrimp up for ourselves. Just pinching the heads off. Super easy. I'm actually really fortunate this is super easy or else, like, I've got like a thousand shrimp to clean. This would be kind of a pain in the rear. How you doing? You know, I just pulled up. I'm getting ready to cook up some lunch. How about you? Whew. I just got done shrimping, so it was real good out there. But yeah, just figured before I want to cook up some lunch, then head out. But I figured I may as well throw a couple lines in while I'm at it. So yeah, <laughs> good luck. Oh, I got one. Hold up. Wait, I got one. He was like snagged on the bottom. Wait a second. Y'all, we got a fish. I didn't even know it. He was like snagged on the bottom. Doesn't feel terrible. Oh no, we got a stingray. Now that's good shark bait right there. Somebody looks like maybe caught this guy before because he's got no stinger. What people will do is when they catch him, they'll take the, uh, they'll pull the stingers out. Let me grab my pliers. Yeah, like he's definitely got no stinger on him. There we go. Sorry about that. You know, if I were here another day, you'd be shark bait. Hoo ha ha. But yeah, you can see there's no stinger on him. He's been caught before. Somebody pulled that stinger out. All right, back you go. Yeeho! Oh, don't act like you're gonna die. Get out of here. He's like, just for your viewers, I wanna be like, uh, he mishandled me. Look at the abuse. Okay, we've adjusted the boat slightly to fish this cover better. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna try to turn this on first. Is that on? Mm, oh yeah, okay, yeah that is. All right, we have our skillet from this morning that we cooked our sausage in. So we've got some remnants of sausage in there, which is always a delight. We're gonna throw a half a stick of butter in here as well. Going all in on the butter. Can't have too much butter. Let's let this melt down. All right, we've got our butter melted down. We're just gonna go ahead and set both of these fillets right in it, right smack dab in it. Then I'm gonna use for this some Seafood Spectacular, a favorite on the channel. All right, we're gonna turn these. Look at that. Oh, kind of falling apart there. We're just sauteing these in butter, if you couldn't tell. I'm gonna turn this. Now let's get some seasoning on this side of the filet. There we go. Now, we have our bowl of shrimp 
and we're just going to dump this right in around the fish like a big old smorgasbord and we're just going to saute everything in that butter now the shrimp will only take like three to four minutes to cook which is perfect because that fish only has about three or four minutes to cook and i'm going to throw some of this uh slap your mama seasoning on that shrimp we're gonna have all these flavors just mixing and melding together mm -mm. I haven't tasted this yet, but I know it's going to taste good. We have absolutely dined like kings out here for our first boat camping trip in the new boat. And I'm loving it. It's going to be hard to top this, I feel like. But we're going to try. Here we go. Mmm. <laughs> shrimp. Fresh shrimp that was alive this morning. I'm going to dip it into the skillet. That's divine. Ah, let's get some of this sheep's head here. Fish around for some. Ooh, big old bite. Ah. That sheep's head's good. A lot of people, sheep's head is actually their favorite uh, saltwater fish. I like flounder better. I've only ever caught one keeper flounder. In fact, you know, next year we need to work a little bit better on targeting flounder because they're my favorite, like probably ocean fish to eat, at least that I've had so far. I should say, intercoastal fish to eat. There we go. Big old bite of sheep's head and shrimp. A cornucopia of saltwater delights. Y'all, what a triumphant first camping trip on the new G3 boat. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with me and spending the time with me. I think we're going to have a lot more adventures on this thing, doing a lot more camping, a lot more fishing. I'm really excited to see what else we're going to be able to do in the future. This has just opened up, I feel like, more worlds for me and... I'm excited to see where this takes us. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I will see you in the next one.